Don't play with me, I am life. Uh -huh. Don't play with me, I am life. Uh -huh. Don't play with me, I am life. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I am a child of Christ. Yeah. Don't play with me, I am life. Uh -huh. Don't play with me, I am life. Uh -huh. Don't play with me, I am life. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I am a child. This evening, we're gonna just be discussing uh, what is a man, and you know this. This whole week, you know, from since in May, you know, our, um, the whole structure, I wonder, the whole structure with, um, with man's identity, man's purpose, man's, um, being, who man is, you know, it, that has been in our media, that has been in our, um, in the atmosphere now more than ever even with um, Bruce Jenner and Jenna in his coming out so to speak you know back in the late 70s early 80s when Rock, Rock Hudson you know he he came out and he he actually blazed the trail for this movement of homosexuality and the acceptance in our society because it was uh, somewhat um, culturally being accepted in the uh, late 60s, early 70s. So now we see today, 2015, um, Bruce Jenner being someone athletically known and renowned in a society, now coming to, to bring an idea that basically saying that you can be anything that you want to be. be just what they're teaching in Harvard, Richard Rowdy, and, and all these social scientists who saying that we can just be what we want to be. Whatever you think, whatever you believe, you can be. And it is a matter of utilizing this language in a way that is only beneficial to you, relativism based upon our social structure so language now and it, only english language could be deconstructed as it is being deconstructed in our society in our society it's been de deconstructed as it is as we embrace this this idea of relativism and how are we to identify with this thing we call um, man, you know, um, before we we get into our discussion and, and truly look and see what is a man, I went we uh, uh, we went to a men's conference this weekend and um, the men's conference, uh, a real renowned conference in New York City, where um, the identity of man ought to have been stated or made known to whomever come into that environment. And to my surprise, I went there with the expectation to know, to know and to come out with an understanding or to provoke talk and dialogue as to what is a man. You know, and with, in, in, in any environment, if I go in into college, if I go into any type of um, institution to learn something, that which I am going to pursue, there is a definition that describes what I, I am going to embark upon or, or learn about or discover or, or grow to, to learn and to understand that aspect of what I'm pursuing. Now, we live in a 21st century where Daniel said, knowledge shall increase. And knowledge shall be made known to all mankind. But this one fundamental, which we all are, from the time we were created and placed upon this earth, what is a man? You know, while we were in the conference, you know, a lot of lecturers, renowned names, you know, I wouldn't call any for, say, for um, embarrassment. Um, I asked them, what is a man? They look at me like this and they say, well, what is a man? 
Well, as a, a man is someone who take care of the responsibility. A man who is one who go out and actually bring home the bacon, who is educated, who goes to war. Uh, a man is one who provide and, and, and give security and discipline. I say, well, uh, is a woman a man? Because uh, in today's society, there are more women who are fulfilling those roles that you describe than what you say is a man. So what is a man? Because all what you said there, those characteristics or those functions fit the criteria of a woman. I could say, well, then my mother is a man because for uh, a number of years, she was without a husband per se, and she was the breadwinner for our home until she married her handsome husband, who is my father-in-law today. What is a man? And all these different definitions that they're given. But it's not definitive of what is a man. Because when they give that description, it comes back to like, okay, so then, is a woman a man? And their faces were like, astonished or bewildered or now bringing to bear what they're actually saying because I'm just repeating to them what they have said. It's good to repeat to someone what they say a, a thing is because sometimes you're saying something but you're not hearing what you're saying but it's only when it's repeated back to you you're actually saying wow. You know it's um, like in, uh, in, in class today you know um, New York University, while we're in class today, we, um, Monday, I was talking to this gentleman and uh, he, um, while we were talking, you know, we were talking about morality, he looked at my book and I was reading this book by um, Norman Geisler and um, Frank Turek and uh, um, legislating morality. Whose morality would you um, legislate? And he, um, he looked and he said, oh, good luck with that, you know, so for me, I, I love a discussion. He said, good luck for, with that, you know. So I went and I continued to pursue the, the argument, the dialogue. And uh, while we were talking, he said, well, you know, um, there are no absolute. And, you know, you, you can't legislate morality because there's so many different um, ideas. And how could he know what is right? So when he, after he finished, I said, no, is that an absolute? He looked at me and, and he was like... <laughs> Okay, and, and he keep using these contradictory statements, but he wasn't hearing himself. So I just repeat to him what he said, and it, it's like, if he found himself now lost for what? Because you could see that he's an aged man, a learned man, and, you know, um, being exposed to relativism and deconstructionism and um, um, all the different ideas that plagues our environment and his worldview he seems not, uh, not to really have a definitive worldview, but it's, it's, it's somewhat like a common call. You know, he just catches as he goes along. And uh, now his, 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 his discussion or our dialogue, um, he, he say, oh, thank you for your argument. Thank you for your discussion. Thank you. Because you know, he realized that he couldn't go on with the conversation because his conversation or the, the foundation of his premise, it had no bearing on reality or on any type of absolute because you must start with something concrete, some certainty in order to make any type of reference or to live in a community that is consistent for all persons in all places at all times. The issue of man, what is a man? Now, Bruce Jennings, he says that he is a woman. But can he be a woman? No. Can a man be a woman? No. It's impossible. You know, while one of the speakers was speaking this weekend, you know, he was making mention of Bruce Jennings. And, and uh, he, he said, um, you know, he don't know how to actually describe this person. He or she or she or he. And it just goes to show us that even us who ought to know the truth and to be scholarly minded concerning Holy Writ and having a cognizant knowledge and understanding of what scripture teaches concerning our identity and reality, we ought to be definitive. We ought to be certain on whatsoever um, ideas we are putting forth there. So now when he speaks like that, like 
you know, he don't know how to relate to this Bruce. It just goes to show that we are saying that we are not even certain of the miraculous creation of God's human element. And if we are not certain, you expect the world to be? You expect the world to be? Now, if Bruce saying that he is a woman, man, when we hear that word man, how, we, how are we to describe a man? Well, how, how most people in this world describe a man from a biological perspective? How would they describe a man? Penis. A man have a penis. Yeah, because uh, that in itself it gives a definitive claim to that person's identity. And that penis, it, it proves that you have a seed that has the what? Ability, or if you're under 12 or under the age of um, um, uh, actuality of development as a man, you have the potential. However, when you reach that age of um, fullness and you have all that which is necessary, spermatozoa, and all that which is necessary in order for you to bring forth a child, now you have the ability to bring forth a child. So now, what is a man from the, the core essence of all creation? What is a man? We know that biologically and social scientists say that a man is um, uh, a biological creature that has like male genitals and and what have you and they classify you in the male category however we see to date that scientists are changing the male physical genital and giving a man that of a female genital without the component in order to truly ratify you as a man or a woman. What makes a man a man? What defines a man as a man? Is it only his penis? Because we, we know today that is not true. Your penis can't define you as a man. We know there must be something more. Something more that will define you as a man. What is this something? What is this thing that defines us more or give us this definitive edge and classification as a male person rather than just having a genital attached to ourselves and saying now we are either man or woman. What is that? Now when we hear, you look at this word man, M-A-N, this word in itself, it has no meaning. It, it just carries uh, an identity based upon classification for male person or female person. This just gives you a gender, a gender classification. And this gender classi class classification is, is, is different from a boy and a mature person because man now put in a category that they haven't uh, uh, an ability, not potentiality, because potentiality is that which uh, at some particular point in time will come about, but ability is that which you are fully ready and able and equipped with in order to bring about some end product, right? And that is, that is based upon the functionality of this person. So what is a man? How are we to understand this definition of a man? Now, in, when you look at when Yahweh made man, because we are Judeo-Christian here, and we understand that when Yahweh made man, he made man from the Adama. And the Adama, The Adama, right, which is the earth. He made man from the Adama and from man you have Ish. 
And this word ish gives you the identity of the male person. So this word here, it gives you the male, the male person. So this, this ish here gives you the identity of the male person. Now, to date in our society, because we don't know who we are in the sense of our very essence, we now are redefining who we are as person. Now, what makes a person a person? What makes a person a person? Who can tell me what makes a person a person? What makes a person a person? Now, when you look at this word, Adam, right? In this word, there are three letters that makes this, this entity, the Aleph, the Delita, and the Men. And this, tr these three letters, it actually gives you Ava and Im, father and mother. And what makes a man or a man give him that definitive edge as a person is the very essence of the creator, the very nature of God. God Breed into man, and we're using the word breed in order to clarify this communicable attribute that Yahweh now placed within an inanimate object. Because remember that when Yahweh made man in Genesis 2, and he said, Let us make man in our own image and likeness, and Yahweh breed into his nostril, and man became a living soul. This word. Adam is taken from the Adama. And this word Adama, when you vowel this word Adama differently, Adame, Adame, it means to be similar to, to be similar to the Aleph. And when you are, the, 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 the Dama is being similar to the Aleph, who is the Aleph? We know the Aleph is to be represented God. And when, what this word is literally saying, the earth that Yahweh now create, this earth is to be similar to God. It's to look like God, the Aleph. Now this Spirit being here now as Yahweh has made it. Now we could see something going on here. Did God make man just to be only a spirit being? To go aside and just to go in a monastery and just to be a spirit? Uh, a spirit man? No. We see another part of man is the dam. This dam here is the end product of man when we look at the Adama. Be the Adam or the Ma is the earth. That is the earth, the red earth that is was man was taken out from. So now when we look at the Adam, which is the spirit and the flesh. So the earth and the flesh. So man now has two components. Two components that describes who he is. So man has a, a, a dual state, a spiritual state. That's right, a, spirit, a, a spiritual state and a physical state. So this spiritual state and this physical state, they must continue to exist in one environment, in oneness. This man cannot exist in this realm without his spirit nor his physical component. It's impossible. When we look at this word here as it is broken down, this word here 
Ava and Im is father and mother. And you see when Ava is taken out of the, the Adam and the Im is taken out of the Adam. And when you do a numerical structure, this word fits clearly inside of this name. So you're seeing that man has its resemblance to God in oneness. So now this, this whole, this two here, this two person is really one and can't exist as individual but as one. And if a man is saying that he's not a man but he's a woman, then it's just only to bring confusion to people, to children who are actually looking on. Because a child will only mimic what they see and what they know. And if we are saying that we could change the physical identity of a person, we are crazy. We can't do that. Now, let me show you how you can change the physical identity of a person. Remember I said this ish means that this is a male. This is a male person. And a male person has certain uh, um, characteristic and, 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 and attribute that is only for him and him alone. Just as the, when we look at the im and the ava, the father and the mother, you're seeing um, um, the, 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 the strong house or the, 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 the authority of the house. This is what this word here is saying in a pictorial sense. And this, one, this word here is saying the strong water or the glue. So this word here is saying it's the strong house and this is the glue. So the woman is the one that holds this strong house together. This is the wisdom of God. So without the woman, it's impossible for the house to actually stay together. The, for the, the children, the husband, the, the, the entire household to sit and stay in that unified oneness. It's the responsibility of the man. However, it's the responsibility of the woman to keep a house in an environment that is safe, healthy, and th that glue that that man need to come home to every single day. This is what he said. This is what the man said in this house. So the, the, the man is always coming back home because this is, the safe, this is the safety for the woman. This is safety for the woman. And this is the woman holds the entire family together. Now look at something with this word, the ish. And this word, Ishe. Now, when you look at this word, Ishe and Ish, these two words have something similar in common. Right? When you remove the Yod and the He, what you have, you have ish and this is she so now we are seeing, and uh, this man is in our media today Bruce when he said that he is not a man what he is actually following is it just his physical component his physical makeup and this is what this is how Yahweh made us and that or this ish has to do with what? Choice. Choices. This ish has to do with choices. Now you could be anything, and this word literally spells what? Fire. This word literally spells fire. Ish. It literally spells fire. So, and also passion. So you could have that passion to be what you want to be. You could choose to be what you want to be. You could choose to be anything. Now, with just self-discovery, self-realization, apart from God, the creator of all human person, 
all you will discover is what Yahweh make mention in Romans chapter 1 8 and uh, the law they choose not to uphold in their heart but that law working against them accusing and excusing them they are without excuse for they choose not to what retain Yahweh even in their thoughts because they want to do what is pleasing in their own sight Yahweh give them over to what a reprobate man. Yahweh say he himself is going to create a delusion. Now is that, is that mistranslation? In that, not Yahweh is actually creating the illusion as the uh, translators of the, the, the scriptures put it. Man becomes, becomes so much uh, uh, tied and linked with themselves that they choose to follow only what they believe. And what they feel rather than what is being disclosed to them. What is being disclosed to us as men and women? The he and the yod. This he and this yod in man and woman is the divine spark. Um, this uh, nuclear physicist, physicist uh, what's his name? Um, he, um, he is the president of the planetarium in New York City. Um, hmm, his name just jumped up my mouth, my God. Um, as he said in his um, writing and his, in his discussion, you know, he said um, that all human person have uh, the, a piece of the star in them, stardust. No, he's right. He is right. We all have this element of status in us because we have these uh, um, elements within us that relate to our environment. And that is how Yahweh made that. And that is dealing with the ish. But then there is something that is more in us that you can't see under a microscope. You can't see under um, natural... Uh, Science, you got to take a forensic approach. A forensic approach is that anything that you can bring to the court of law in order to present your argument. That which has occurred, that which has been stated in reality. It may be a one-time occurrence. It may be something that occurred once, but the evidence is there. It's clear. It's like the afterglow in the galaxy. The, the, uh, when they look at the, after the Big Bang and they see all the, the afterglow and the seeds scattering our universe, we know that this earth had a point of beginning. So now with that in mind, we can bring to bear on the argument, the forensic, that we could now have a point of reference to prove our case that we are presenting. So now, the man and the woman has this in common if you take the hair out and the yod out. Now this hair and yod in itself, these two letter, letters, it spells a word. Oh, this is why the Hebrew, letter, the Hebrew language is so beautiful. You see, these two letters, when you take it from the man and the woman, it spells a beautiful word. It, sp it spells a hand. It spells a hand. A hand is something that is projected, that stretch out. It also means to be or to exist. This word in itself is actually telling you that this ish and ishi could only exist as the spark of the creator, the yod and the he is, bring to, is brought to bear on their existence. Now, Bruce Jenner, as he said that he is a woman, he can never be a woman because his entire makeup is with a yod. And a yod is that which makes him who he is. He can never change the state of his mind, the, the, the neurochemical, the vasopressin that is present in him. All the hormone treatment he can take to change the physical distribution of his body. Because let's say I get in an accident. 
I lose all my limbs, my arms, my legs. I am immobile and I can't function with my body. My spine is broken. All I have is my neck. And two, my face is disfigured. Am I now something that, th th that never exists? The me know or the I is who I am and I can never stop being me because with all my limbs, my limbs don't define me. My arms don't define me. All the uh, extension of my being is for operation, is for functionality, is for me to carry out certain functions and behavior. However, those things don't define me. We know of eunuchs in the Bible who they had their genitals, they had their physical manhood, but the kings and the, 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 the rulers who they were assigned to, they castrate these men. They weren't able to bring forth any child or children. However, that didn't change who they are as human person as being male. And a male person is defined by this yod. This yod is a projected letter. This yod is a beautiful letter. This yod is a hand that is actually step, um, bringing, uh, want to come out or want to extend into this realm. Want to, want, to, want to make certain things known in this realm. This is why all that which is in the man, because the man is always thought to be in a place of uh, um, um, astute, uh, always in an intellectual place, always, always trying to reach God to bring things down and to bring it out. But the only way it can actually come out is through the woman, through the hair. The hair in itself is a, is, 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 is a combination of a yod and a delete. And a yod and a delete is that which actually now forms a hand. And the delete is a door. Two dimension actually bringing things into this world. Two dimension from the spiritual into the, uh, this physical world. So now a man is not what I think a man is. A man is not what you think a man is. A man is not what anyone think a man is. A man is who God say he is. Even now, let's say, let's say, let's say. We want to say, okay, we evolve. Let's use Darwin construct for a moment. Let's lose the naturalistic premise. Now, as I said, you know what, I should rewind a bit. Because the most important thing in describing a man is to give a definition of a man. And I, you know, when I opened my discussion, I said, we went to this, um, a meeting this last weekend and, and no one described what is a man. What is a man? A man is a male person, a male person that has the ability to reproduce after his own kind and reflect the image of his creator as a priest, husband, father, teacher and leader. That is a man. That is a man. Now the functionality of that man may varies as he puts on certain hat. As he start now and stand in certain position and functionality of the functionality that he has been called to and was created and designed to carry out on this earth. So as a priest, he received all the information from Hashem. Yeshua, the Ruach HaKodesh, all information in order to carry out this, this responsibility here on earth for all to see. So now as he communicates with Yahweh, his mind is filled. Not intellectually, but the very uh, um, conscience or, or, or that which, which gives him the, the ability to just discern what is right and wrong. Not to rationalize, but that which pricks the very essence of the man. That very center of the mind. That which scientists have been looking for, this invisible man in the head for all generations. And still can't find, but makes a definitive claim that we are who we are. This, this yod, this, this, this man received the information from Hashem. As a priest, 
And as you stand as a priest, there are certain other natural response that your body started to tell you. Now, when I get my book, uh, Don't Play With Me, I Am Life, um, you know, follow the direction of your bishop, you know, it's disclosed inside there how you are to deal with your sexuality. When your male genital responds to you and command you, this is the aspect of man. If you don't have a relationship with Hashem, Yahweh, it's impossible when he calls for you now to be responsible, be ethical, be moral, and be the man that you have been designed to be and treat a woman as she is to be treated and a man as he is to be treated. You can because you don't understand what it means to be a man as a priest. So, as a priest, by extension, when your penis arouse you, you will know that you need a what? A wife. A wife. Because when your penis arouse, two things will happen. It's either you give yourself to Hashem as Paul did, and we see many um, choose to carry out this lifestyle because they could control their desires and redirect the energy onto Hashem. But not all of us. I can't do that. <laughs> Bless Paul and these brothers and them. And I had to have my beautiful wife. You know, because when they see the bishop rise, you know, I will say hallelujah. <laughs> but without understanding that all that which is going on within you, if it don't connect with Yeshua, when these response come about, you wouldn't know that you need a wife. And you end up like Bruce. Bruce say, well, I don't know. I have been like this all my life. Now, if you have been this all your life, why wait until your after you have children, you enjoy the beauty and the, the fulfillment of Eden, of, of, of a beautiful woman, right? And all these women that you had into, um, into relation with. It's crazy. It just shows you how sick our society is. And these legislators who are enacting behaviors that are just based upon opinions and feelings, which has no structure in any kind of absolute premise, no objectivity. Only based upon a subjective and relativistic response to a, 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 a growing, a, um, a growing environment that only breeds hatred, chaos, and destruction. We need to rise up as men. Understand that we are ish, and we have the yod. We have the spark of the creator in us. Because this word here, e, 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 you know, we hear, haye. If I put a here, here, that means, la haye, to life. Okay? So now, this word here, your, he, vav, he. What word does spell? Your hey vav hey. What word does that spell? Yahweh. Yahweh. This is the name of the creator. So for short, this is why even this letter in the Hebraic, uh, uh, even when it, when it counting in Hebrew, this your and hey, uh, basically it gives, it, it gives you how much? Your is 10 and he is 5. So there's 15. They never write 15 like this. Never. Because it's the name of the creator in the Hebraic language. In the Hebraic, even when they're counting, they never write this as 15. Never. Because it's the name of God and the name of God is not even taken as when we hear the word name. That's another um, um, topic. Shem. It's, it's not what we think it is. It speaks about the very character of that thing when we hear name. And what Bruce Jenner is actually doing, he is taking the name of God in vain. Because the name of God is what, and what that thing name is. And if you are a man, you are a man. 
You are a man. And to say that you are not a man, what 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 corresponds with that with that um with that uh third uh commandment? You shall not take the name of the Lord in God and veil. It's the eighth commandment which says, You shall not what? Steal. Huh? You shall not steal. So look at the correlation and the correspondent. You shall not steal. So what you actually doing, you are stealing something that is not yours. You cannot take onto yourself an identity that has no kind of relation with you. You shall not steal. And to steal is to take on another identity that has no bearing with you. And you, you, you can't say that you're you didn't know because your very essence will tell you that you are not what you are saying you are. You know, in Isaiah, it said, now, in the last days, men will call good, evil, and evil, good. Those words, they don't even know what it means. What is good? Good, by definition, is that which is desirable for its own use. Mm -hmm. That which is desirable for its own use. Satan is good. Because he has his use. He has his use. He's good. A gun is good. A bullet is good. But then when apply to its categories and to its functionalities in reference to that which is desirable unto God, then it becomes dysfunctional. It becomes uh, something that cannot and will not exist with our creator. Listen, you guys who are looking on, um, who are here with us looking on and enjoying our discussion. You can't be what you are not. You can't be what you are not. You cannot bring a name on yourself. That is not definitive in your very essence, your very core. Mm -hmm. You are a man or a woman. Yes. You have the spark of the creator in you, which is a yod as men. As a woman, you have the hay. You can do what you want. You can lie in the bed. You could, you could try to lie to people how much you want. You know when you sleep at night, the dreams that you're going to have. And all what Yahweh is going to tell you, all what Hashem, the Ruach HaKodesh will tell you, is that you need... To change. Now, I don't know. I, I really don't know. If you <laughs> and Jesus Christ say, um, who blaspheme of the Holy Spirit? There is what? There is no forgiveness for blaspheming of the Holy Spirit. You know, a lot of apologists um, um, say, well, you know, the, the only sin that you wouldn't be forgiven to is those who reject God, who say that God doesn't exist. You know, there are some truths to that. Because... When you take on an identity and change the very physical nature of yourself, what you are saying to God and to all those who see you is that God don't know who he is and he doesn't know who you are and you can be whatsoever you want to be. So this sin, I don't even know if this is reversible. Bruce said that he had a feeling for years that he was a woman. You see? You have a feeling. A feeling is not a right nor wrong, good or bad. A feeling is a feeling. It ebb and flow. It comes and goes. I can feel a lot of way. I can feel sick. I can feel hungry. But when I satisfy those feelings, that doesn't mean that that feeling dominates and directs my behavior. It's impossible. So, even if you are saying that I am, I am a woman when you were designed as a man, the effects of your expression of who God is to all those who are observing you, you now become a reprobate. In all of society, and you are telling the young man who are looking at you, God is not who he says he is. God does not exist because I am my God. I am God. And this is what 
ministers and pastors got to study their word and come out and teach the people that these men are destroying our young men and young women when they see these wicked evil men standing on national television influencing and um, um, impacting the lives of our young men and they go home and say mommy mommy I'm a woman I'm a woman yeah, mommy I'm a woman and exactly all different type of forms because they are now influenced by the media, by the government, by the state, by their teachers, by their peers. And we as pastors, we as ministers, rabbis, all those who believe in this theistic God, all those who say that God exists, Let's put aside our differences of our religious expression and come to the true essence. As, as C.S. Lewis said, the Tao of reality, that which is common in all of humankind, this moral structure that ties all human persons together. Let's come sit down, reason, and bring to bear the fundamental aspect of who and what we are so that we will leave a nation of young men and women who knows whose they are and who they are and can represent Yeshua, in any type of discussion, in any class, in any environment, as in relation to identity, without knowing who you are as a man, it's hard for you to live and function as a man. Because most men today, all on those radio programs, when you hear these men talking, they had homosexual experience. Oh, well, you know, um, I'm, uh, I, I was raped when I was a young boy, and... And oh yes, you know, but God and, and his brothers in the church, they came around. Why you have to speak like that? Why do you have to speak like a, like if you're effeminate? Give me a break, you man. You have kahunas. Speak like a man. Don't be a woman. Even though you have been exposed to these things, you are who you are, a man. And this society has made our men into wimps. Telling you, you gotta be like these women, putting men in the classroom like women, want men to be like, oh, shut up and be, be quiet. We are men, and men are men. Men want to protect, men want to fight, men want to conquer. And if you are not given the right to fight, then there is no peace. Because without war, you can't have peace. We are in a fight. The kingdom of God suffer violence, and the violent take it by force. 2 uh, Corinthians 10, 4 and 6 going on, they say what? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty true Hashem, Yeshua. For the pulling down of strongholds and any idea and knowledge and, 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 and discussion that exalts itself against what? The knowledge of God. And you know, the, the war is about the raw truth. That's right, because this word, this word, if it's not understood, if it's not understand, if it's not understood, if this word is not understood, emet, we're lost. We're lost. Emet, amen. This word, this word, it speaks about the mark, the mark of the blood. Of the creator in this world. That is what this world is speaking about. Emet. The truth of reality. This world. This cosmos. It has this mark. Whose mark? Christ's mark. In here. Of Hashem. Who? Yahweh sent his son into the world to die. The blood. The mem. That is shed for all mankind. In this cosmos. In this cosmos. This is the truth. Of the gospel. So the, the, the changing of our language um, to understand the truth, you have to understand the language of truth. That's right. You must, because this is what uh, yeah, uh, the prophet said in Zephaniah. He said in Zephaniah 3 9, in the last days, Yahweh is going to bring back his. Pure language. 
people say, well, you know, people can't speak Hebrew. But why it is? Yahweh is, so, Yahweh is beautiful. Eh? When you look at Psalms 119, and every one of the different categories in the first Psalm 19, you see the Aleph, the Bet, the Gemel, the Delit, the He, the Vav, the Zion, the Het, the Tet, the Yod, the, uh, the uh, Lamen, the, the Mem. You will see every single subset to the 119 Psalm categorized with each Hebrew letter from 1 to 22. Why is that? Why is that? Because this letter, this language, it's divine. It's not one to be worshipped, but it points to the, the clarity and consistency of what is spoken in the Tanakh. In Yahweh's word. In Yahweh's word. There is no contradictory contradiction in this word. This word is constant in, its, in, in all its rendition, all what is written. A man can only be known when, when you come to know Christ. Outside of Christ, all you have is fire, all you have is passion, and this is what we have in the word. Now, you out there, we hear at reason and truth, come on down, come and join the discussion. Any question, any... Uh, argument you may have come let's talk let's dialogue 194 1817 road st albans new york reason and truth ministries this is where we reason the truth of hashem's word and give an answer to all who ask with gentleness and with respect but with passion and violence against the evil ideas that permeates our environment come on down and let's all commune to truth Let's stand with truth. Hindus, Muslim, um, rabbis, all those atheists, agnostic, all Gentiles, all religious believers. Come, let's talk, let's dialogue because time is short. Time is running out and we need to present the truth. We need to get rid of all the dust, get rid of all the cobwebs and communicate and reason and bring to bear on our ideas, on our reasoning, the truth of the gospel. Regardless, if I am wrong, I will put up my hand like this. Once you could show me and prove to me that Hashem, Yeshua Mashach, the Ruach HaKodesh, is not who he says he is, I will put him away in a second. He is the truth. I know that. The certainty of his word is established in the Tanakh. In the Torah, in the gospel. And hence he said, you should read. And hence he said, now bring your read, bring your argument, come. As Isaiah said, come, bring your read. For he knows, he knows all, and he has the goods. Come on down, and let's reason one with another. Nice for you to be in with us. Gonna see you next week. Hashem. Shalom. Don't play with me. I am life, uh huh. Don't play with me. I am life, uh huh. Don't play with me. I am life, uh huh. Uh -huh. I am a child of Christ. Yeah. Don't play with me. I am life, uh huh. Don't play with me. I am life, uh huh. Don't play with me. I am life, uh huh. Uh -huh. I am a child of Christ.